I like how you can see the emulation stuff. Hello everybody, welcome to my next Let's Play of Let's Play Another Zelda game. Let's play The Legend of Zelda, a link to the- Oh my god, seizure! Holy crap, these games are spammed with flashes. <sighs> the Legend of Zelda, a link to the past. As you can see, I, I sort of uh, started a game. That, that was, I guess you could say, for some uh, test recording. But it's time to start this game with super high def quality. As you can see, I am emulating it at a, at a, at a high uh, at a high quality. Um. So yeah, I gotta put clutch. But here we go, guys. Uh, this is basically a blind, a whole blind LP. I have almost no knowledge of this game. Just the barely of the beginning. All right. So here we go. Help me, please help me. I am a prisoner in the dungeon of the castle. My name is Zelda. Well, Zelda's talking to us already. The wizard Agnim has done something to other missing girls. I hope this wizard is a girl. Now only I remain. Agnim has seized control of the castle and is now trying to open the seven wise men's seal. I am the in the dungeon of the castle. Please help me. Clutch, I'm going out for a while. I'll be back in the morning. Don't leave the house. Alright, buddy. In the meantime, I'm going to destroy these pots. Screw you, pots. Alright, so this is a completely new game. A link to the past. I know it's kind of weird jumping from a... Uh, we got a link. We cannot let a dark book place it. Anyways, that might be a bit weird that we're sort of, um... Add uh, the link to the past to something like Zelda 2, but I decided I don't want to let, let's play every single Zelda game, basically. Like, no to exist. Maybe a whole bunch, but not like every single Zelda game. And I've never ever played Zelda 2, and all I know is it's nightmarish hard, and I just don't want to go through the pain and stress and agony, knowing I've already gone through that in Sonic. In Sonic in the, uh, the first Zelda game. So, as you can see immediately, we're able to push her throw stuff. Yeah. Now what I love about this Zelda game and the second Zelda, or the first Zelda game is uh, I'll tell you when we get there, which is actually coming out right here. Here's the entrance to the dungeon, being like sucked in, and we fall down, and it's our dad, I think. Mm, clutch, I don't want to, you to. Uh, I didn't want you involved in this. I told you not to leave the house. Take my sword and shield and listen. You can focus the pow you can focus power in the blade. I can't read. Hold the B button. Then release it using the secret technique handed out by our people. Clutch, do it. Say the Princess Zelda is your I don't know, but he's dead. Great way to start a game. A dead person. Alright, so what I like about this game and what I've liked about the um First Zelda is the fact that I love how it starts us off immediately with um, the sword. I just always love that because then I don't have to do a whole bunch of work just to get the sword. We do that in a lot of Zelda games with other games, you know, you have to do a whole bunch of work before getting the sword. Which just, I don't know, I just I just like doing the combat already and starting doing the adventure. I guess I'm just impatient or something like that. So now we're able to cut the grass. Now in the grass there should be, you know, um, the standard things like rupees. I don't know if there's anything in this tall grass, but in this these like bush like things, I know there's rupees hidden in here. Uh, I'm just gonna destroy them, but if you hold down the um, B button and walk into a bush, it will damage them. But if you do it to say a person, which I'll show you up here, it if it will hurt them instead of doing the, the whole entire spin attack. So you don't have to do the spin attack, you can just sort of hold down the button and if you fail, then you manage to ram the person. I don't know why I'm destroying these bushes. Um you can um ow, just hold down the button. Alright, so I have not fully completed this dungeon from my knowledge, so I guess in a way, um, it's going to be completely blind once I get Zelda, because you do actually collect her very early on, but I have no idea what you do after that, except for, I guess one thing, I suppose. So, the enemy killing is a bit pointless from my knowledge. 
off of what I'm gonna do it anyways, just because it's fun. So, it's gonna start us off with multiple paths. I don't know the exact location we're supposed to go, or if there's an exact spot we're supposed to go, but I'm just gonna sort of investigate around the area to get a good, like, look around my environment, I guess. So, pots are throwable too, so. and these are hills or cliffs, I guess, that you can hop off of, sort of like think of Pokemon. Uh, I guess it's the only thing you can really compare it to. Now these statues, they don't turn alive, so I'm happy about that. Now we're in floor B1, and we're supposed to press A to open chests. We got a map. You can see it per current position by pressing X. So no long on um, this game, which might get a bit of pestering on my end, you have to actually press the X button, which will show us the map. It could get a bit irritating, I suppose. But it's nothing like super annoying. But I guess it can get a bit irritating after a while. I'll probably get used to it. But I'm used to most games having the, some sort of map or indication of where you're at. Um, somewhere in like the corner or the side or something. So, yeah, and pots are overpowered. I just wanted to throw that in there. Pots are extremely overpowered. No, 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 I don't want to walk in here. And walking up steps stops time. We're not the hero of time yet, but we're able to stop time itself. Somehow, we're walking upstairs. So. Something you should keep in mind. Alright, so I'm not really sure what to talk about. Oh, okay, here's our first, uh, you gotta kill the, all the enemies in the room to open the door, door, I guess you could say. And, the, and that spin attack makes these guys much easier to kill, so. Yeah. And now we get the boomerang. Which works as the boomerang did in the first game. It is uh, a stunning utility which we throw with the Y button, I think. I'm using a completely different controller. <laughs> I wouldn't really know. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. Okay. Oh, yeah, it, it damages, I guess, too. No, I know it doesn't, I lied. Either that or it does really low damage. Yeah, it's time for the first boss. Yes, we are already up to a boss. Now, I'm aware, I'm completely aware of the glitches that happened in this boss, which are game breaking. I need to stop throwing that at an angle. But I am not doing those, of course. I need to stop throwing this at an angle. There we go. This boss is about seven times easier. Mini boss, boss, I don't know what you'd call this thing. Even, either way, or whatever he is, he's seven times easier. And there is a big key. And the big key is used to open this door. I want that chest. Go away, Zelda. Thank you, Clutch. I had a feeling you were getting close. Clutch, listen carefully. The wizard is magically controlling all the soldiers in the castle. I fear the worst for my father. The wizard is an inhuman friend with strong magical powers. Do you understand this at all? Yes. Alright, let's get out of here before the wizard notices. I know a secret path, but first we have to go to the first floor. Let's go. What's in here? Rupees. Awesome. Well, that's going to conclude this part. And because I'm starting to get, or I want to have little low parts instead of having these really long parts. So I'll see you guys next time in the next part where we will escape the castle. Basically, from here on out, we can consider this blind. So, yeah, that's only how far I've gotten in this game. See you guys next time where we complete, get, or the, complete the first dungeon, I suppose. Goodbye.